Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another 6x6 one sheet wonder that makes a traditional slimline card. So I know many slimlines have become a little bit more popular since I started this series, but I'm talking about the larger slimline and at 8.5 by 3.5 being the finished card size. So I've shared a few of these in the past, this is the fourth one. There will be a downloadable PDF that you can get over on my blog that will tell you exactly how to cut everything and how to assemble it. So you don't need to pay too much attention to that, which is good because the filming on this got a little wonky. So I apologize for the fact that like I'm a little too zoomed in and things like that during this video, but you go over to the PDF and it tells you what to do. I actually picked out a piece of 12 by 12 paper and I cut it it down to six by six and then use it as a six by six. You could probably use the measurements differently, but honestly, one of the reasons I like to do all of these with six by six examples is because six by six and 12 by 12 are the most popular size of paper available in my country. And so that is what I can access most easily. But the fact that if I do it as six by six size instead of a 12 by 12 means that you could use it no matter which of the two paper sizes you have. So one six by six is going to get you one card. I am using double-sided paper. In general, double-sided paper works really well for these one sheet wonders because it means you can mix up the patterns. I'm gonna cut a three by six section, which is what I'm laying down here, and then a three by two section. That, those two pieces are going to be taped together so it looks like I have one really long eight inch piece but of course I don't because I started with a six by six piece of paper and I'm going to cover the seam between the two of them with the other element which is the three by four piece. I'm matting all of this on cardstock that is a quarter inch bigger. In the case of the fact that so I, out of the three by four pattern paper I am cutting a circle. I give you, I suggest about a two and a quarter inch circle. Really just kind of pick whatever size works for you. I love nesting dies. I think that even if you don't love to craft a lot, having a basic set of nesting dies in circles, ovals, rectangles, etc. is really a good investment and you something you will use repeatedly. So I cut the circle out of the three by four and then because I'm going to layer it with a border it's going to cover up the hole that was left in the paper and I'll show you how to I, I'll talk about that narwhal who's going to be a important part of my overall design in the end but here I just wanted to be clear that like so you could see how the hole was working and that it's going to be covered up so you don't have to worry about that it's just a way of adding interesting shapes like circles without giving you scraps because ordinarily if you cut a bunch of circles you'd be left with a bunch of scraps but by you know just covering it up in the end it works out um, and then I just take the nesting circle die that's one bigger and I use that to create my border it may be a little bigger and smaller or smaller than a quarter inch but it doesn't particularly matter this is a die set from Lawn Fawn and the single die set creates a seal a narwhal and a whale. Sometimes in the past I've avoided these because I find that you have to cut out a lot of different pieces from different colors of cardstock, but this one was really cute and I like that you would get several animals out of it and I do have the woodland critter dies, the little like huggers, and I have really enjoyed working with those in the past. I actually have a whole bunch of videos of how you can make even more animals with them, so I'll try to remember to leave that in the video description. But this particular narwhal design, I only had to use three colors of cardstock, and I could cut it all with one pass in my Gemini Junior by using like small bits of cardstock because none of the dies were very big. So I actually cut a whole bunch of these, and I made these four cards uh, with the one sheet wonder and then a bunch of other cards to use up some other pattern paper and scraps etc. I did stamp the sentiment directly onto my pattern paper because my pattern paper was actually solid on the back but if you had a pattern that was too bold that you couldn't stamp your sentiment directly on it and you wanted to mimic something similar to what I'm doing here 
I would just take a banner die and cut it out. And actually, I accidentally glued the polka dot side up on one of them. And so I did cut a banner because I could not stamp on top of this polka dot. Those polka dots are actually a little bit of foiling on the paper. So there I will layer my solid circle covering the hole and then my pattern circle. And I actually cut my solid circle out of the mat for the three by four, again, just to save cardstock. But you could of course just cut those separately. And then I will glue on my little critter here. I'm using Barely Art Glue. I like it because it's refillable and it sticks to a lot of things. So even though there's some foiling back here, it should hold really, really well. And that's gonna be about it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to the things that I mentioned and any of the products that I can, as well as to the blog where you can get this downloadable template and go have fun playing with some of that paper in your stash. And here's a few more videos you might enjoy. Have an awesome day. Bye.